this is the best quickie, except for all the others. We rely more and more on statistics to tell us information about the world around us, but that also means we can be led astray because of something called a statistical paradox, which can happen when you aggregate data. I'll give you an idea. Here are two piles of cards. I tell you I'm going to turn them over and mix them up, and your job will be to pick a red card. You can pick just one card, but from either pile. Which pile are you going to pick a card from? Of course, you're going to pick the one on the left. You have a 100% chance of getting a red card, whereas with the pile on the right, you have an 80% chance. Not bad, but why take the chance when the other pile is a guaranteed win? Let's try it again with two different piles. Here, your odds aren't as good, but you'd still want to pick one card from the left pile. You have a 20% chance of getting a red card, and no chance with the right pile. But now, I combine the piles together. Remember, in both cases, the left pile was better. But this time, you want to pick a card from the right pile. With the left, you have a 1 out of 3 chance of getting a red card. But that chance doubles with the right. When combined together, you get a completely contrary result than when you looked at them individually. This is called Simpson's Paradox, and it has real-world implications. UC Berkeley was accused of sexism when it was observed that they admitted 44% of male applicants, but only 35% of female applicants. But when they looked at individual departments, they found a small but significant bias in favor of women. Turns out, women tended to apply to competitive departments with low admission rates like English, but men tended to apply to less competitive departments with high admission rates like engineering. And just like our cards, that gave us the opposite impression when aggregated. We see this all the time in economics, too. Look at the destruction of the middle class, according to people like Thomas Piketty, evidenced by a drop in median household income. But consider, you have a couple, both of whom work and make $40,000 a year. Their combined household income is 80 k and let's say the median is 50 k Now, they split up, and at the same time, get raises of 8000 they're now both making 48 k a year, but they're in two separate households now. One household above the median just became two households below the median, even though individually they're better off. And that actually drops the median. Multiply that by numerous households, which is what started happening in the 70s as divorce rates increased and people waited longer to get married. And you see how a drop in median household income can happen even though the middle class are easily shown to be better off when observed more directly. So always be careful of aggregate statistics. Remember to dive in and de-aggregate and see what's really going on.